Um, and I would like to introduce our our our. Uh, I asked them to hold them at the desk downstairs. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want to introduce our uh, esteemed <laughs> leaders this evening. As I said, Mike Lasser is here tonight, mostly to celebrate his book, A Word Lover's Lexicon, which I think is the perfect book for our store because everyone seems to be a word nerd in one way or another. So we're having a lot of fun with it. Michael is also the author of Eulogy, My Impending Death, Dark and Light, An Old Buddy Old Pal, and he also has novels for younger readers called Cheater, The Watermelon, and 6-321. He uh, li has lived in Montclair since 1994 and made his first bookstore appearance upstairs in Watchung Bookstore in 1997 with his children's book, The Rain. So he has been a longtime supporter. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> Yay, Mike! <laughs> and equally as dedicated a supporter is Charles Liu and the Liu family. But uh, Charles is a professor and chair of the Department of Physics and Astronomy at the City University of New York's College of Staten Island and an associate astrophysicist with the American Museum of Natural History and Hayden Planetarium in New York. And he hosts the Luniverse, the Luniverse yep. with Dr. Charles. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Blame them. <laughs> and he has authored nine books about the physical and astronomical mm -hmm. sciences. Uh, the last one was um, uh, the Cosmos. Cosmos Explained, right? Which is yeah. such a beautiful book. So we will be getting more in. This should be here shortly. And Charles and his wife, Dr. Amy Grab Lou, and one child. Right? <laughs> One offspring. They live in Montclair and have three cosmically curious children. So thank you for sharing with us tonight and leading us into this exploration. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having us, Mark. Oh, I'm going to do something I never thought I would ever get to do, which is to ask everyone to turn silence your cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> I usually sit alone in a room. I don't usually stand. In front There's of so many crowd. of us. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're actually going to mostly play a game tonight. But before we get to that, I just wanted to tell you a tiny bit about this book. <laughs> 45 years of work went into this book. <laughs> You'd think it would be thicker. <laughs> <laughs> but no, actually, it's very impressive, Mike. Like, how do you work on, f on anything for 45 years? I mean, it's about I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, I went to grad school for writing, and I planned to be a novelist when I got out. And as I was, I started to read all these great books that I'd never read in college. Um, things like Ulysses by James Joyce, and um, books by Nabokov, Nabokov. Um, anyway, a lot of books with a lot of words that I didn't know. And I said, you know, if I want to do this, I really ought to know what the words mean. So I started underlining them and looking them up and making lists. And um, after a few years, I had a pretty big collection. And I decided to organize it. So uh, did you use James Joyce books? Because that will be a very long list. There, yes, there are a lot of, a lot of words. A lot. Interestingly, this book, as, as you will see if you take a look, it has Words are organized by categories. So part, one of the categories is parts of a church. And when I needed a word, a, an example, a sentence, a quote that would use one of those words, I always looked up James Joyce. <laughs> Portrait of the <laughs> Artist, the or Ulysses, and, you know, and all yes, that. And he had an example for everything. And if you Impressive. look at the book, you'll, you'll find those. Um, so let's see. Well, anyway. I, I put that collection together in 1984, a few years ago, a couple years ago. How I Orwellian. I, I, that's true. I, I showed that collection to my daughter, and she said, Dad, you should do something with this. So, <laughs> so um, I started adding to it, getting quotations and illustrations and anecdotes and stuff. Um, my, actually, my favorite part of the book is the illustrations and the captions, most of which are <laughs> really silly jokes. Mm -hmm. So, Charles, would you? I would. Hold um, this up? Here, let me hold this up so you guys can see. See, see this uh, <clears throat> this uh, fine equine specimen. Now, okay. A comparison, comparison is this thing that a horse is covered, like a blanket that covers a horse. 
So the quote that goes with the word comparison is, how is the horse on the left different from, from the horse on the right? And the answer is, are you kidding? There's no comparison, <laughs> but a bunch. <laughs> yeah. Pretty good, right? So, not only is he a novelist, he's a comedian. <laughs> so, all right, um, okay. okay, so we're gonna play this game now, all right, just for fun, and everybody's participating, whether you are three or 103, and you it's called? Twisted Dictionary. I'm guessing that many people here have played what we would call Dictionary, which is yeah, all this makeup stuff. Yeah. city. They actually put that in a box and called it something else, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. that, that's true of many board games. It's like things that you used to play on a piece of paper, but then they found a way to sell it to you. Yeah. Um, but this is nothing like that. <laughs> okay. Just a little. It, it, well, it is a little bit, but it's different. Okay, so instead of a definition that sounds convincing, we want you to invent the most absurd definition you can think of. It should sound like it has something to do with it. You should be able to hear some connection right. to the word itself. So we'll yeah. give you an example. For example, that's right, confusing. right. Uh, go ahead. Persiflage is a mm. real. It's a real word. Persiflage. Where it, according to this note, it's in <laughs> on page one thirty of your book. Okay. Well, persiflage. Hmm. Let me get it. Persiflage. P e r s i f l a g e. What, what might? What could it mean? What could it mean? What could it mean? What 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 might you think that it means? Well, um, persiflage. Pers. I was thinking a flage. Perhaps it's a flower arrangement attached to a woman's handbag? What do you think? I think it's when the Navy SEALs want to go somewhere carefully and they hide behind a big purse. <laughs> <laughs> persiflage. <laughs> okay, so in fact, persiflage means light teasing banter. And there's a quote in the book from D.H. Lawrence from Women in Love. It says, now go away then and leave me alone. I don't want any more of your per meretricious persiflage. Oh, what's Me meretricious? Mer <laughs> <laughs> that would help. How do I know? <laughs> meretricious means a few things. But Does it not mean meritorious? No, it yeah. means whore-like. <laughs> like oh, a, okay. So the, the, the most succinct way to say it. Nah. So, we are going to okay, we're gonna do this. five rounds of this. Five rounds. Right? Yeah. Um, so, I'm going to throw out some pencil. All right, well, yeah. Give the instructions. But here's the thing. Yeah. Um, I you're not forced to do this if you don't want to. But I'll hand out a bunch of, I don't yeah. know, here's a pencils. Way. You'll walk yeah, around yeah, with yeah. pencils. I'm going to walk around. Cards. OK. Here. Take, Everyone take, take like a an index card. Well, actually, if what? you think what? you're going to play, take five, because we're going to yeah. do five. Take rounds. a bunch of index cards. And then if, if you, you think more, you want to play, hand, we're going to get some more out there. So and just start At any point, if you want to join in, if you change your mind, you can come up and grab. If you don't have your own writing instrument, here's some pencils. Pencils, or pens, or other instruments of manual recording of information. Who's feeling stressed and under pressure? Under pressure. Of course, then there's that other song called Pressure. I just want to say that there's a chance that you will actually know the words that we're using. In that case, please don't write the real definition. <laughs> just, just, right. Yeah, as you guys are, any more pencils, pens needed? Okay, all right. Let me send a few more out there. And I will just say, by the way, that uh, astronomy also has words which are great, uh, and in fact, one of the one of the most important words in modern physics and, and quantum mechanics has to do with James Joyce as well. You've probably heard of the term quark. Three quarks for muster mark, which comes from Joyce Finnegan's Wake. He invented that word. He invented that word, and what happened was Murray Gell-Mann, Nobel Prize-winning physicist. Uh, thought that it was a really cool word to use for something that no one had any idea what they were. And since they came in threes, he said, let's call them three quarks, up, down, charm. Hmm. Yeah. So we have great debt to your book as well as scientists. The first word we're going to play with is loco foco. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is, here it is. Loco, loco. It's a, it's a real word. <laughs> okay, loco foco. Comes up often <laughs> in certain circles. <laughs> well, 
Everybody do the local folk. I was thinking of the appropriate thing. Do the local folk. Do 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 Oh, we're going to get the, the we'll, we'll cool we'll definitions. The okay, definitions we will now it. collect definitions. Well, no? who needs more time? Who? who no needs one needs more, more time. time. Oh, you want to need more time? Okay. A little more So time. you guys keep writing while those of you who have the definitions already, we will collect them now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Yeah, you guys are going to need more cards. We may need to tear the cards in half because well, we, we have, have so have many a lot cards. More, a lot more yeah. cards over here. Yeah, there are many more cards over here, but let's, let's save paper by reducing cards. We shall not be... We shall not be uh, uh, prodigious in our paper use, but rather parsimonious, right? Okay, thank you, thank you. More words? Anyone wants the definition of loco foco? Mm. Thank you, thank you. Loco foco. Anyone? Loco foco. Loco foco, loco foco. No more loco focos. Oh, one more loco foco. Thanks. This was a big gamble. I really yes. hope it, <laughs> it works. Loco, loco. <laughs> I hope that the definitions loco are amusing. Loco, loco. Yeah, yeah. Loco. Oh, there must be a Loco foco. Sorry. All right. Okay, so I just click on the map and take turns. Oh, good idea, good idea. Here we go. Okay, here you go. Grab, grab those. Yeah, okay. okay so we're going to... We're going to start. Then you have to read them. That's all problem. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Oh, thanks, Chris. Charles, this is all <laughs> somewhat on the, a little bit on the fly. Charles, I think what we're going to do is yes. let us kind of... Okay. Oh, all right. Okay, so we're going to read them, and then if the really good ones, well, we will arbitrarily decide which ones are good. <laughs> are, are we so are we so arbitrary? Let's, we haven't done this before. So this let's, arbitration. Let's see, we, let's see how it works out. Let's just read them all. Yeah. Okay. okay let's go. Read them all. Good. When one is feeling crazy in school taking a test. Loco foco. Focused on trains. Oh. Okay. Focus on local news. Loco foco. Loco. Oh, wow. Actually, that might be the real the real meaning of it. Okay. Z zooming your camera lens. Onto something really close. Oh, loco foco! <laughs> Uncontrollable fire. Loco foco! Loco foco! <laughs> um, fear of locomotive companies. Ah, <laughs> not Norfolk Southern. Oh. Loco no, foco. No, no folks. <laughs> <laughs> no foco Southern. Okay. Crazy eye. <laughs> I am. Can you read that? Can I read that? Really small type. No, it's it's small mouth. Small management? Whoever wrote small that, something. Please write small more neatly engine. next time. <laughs> small train? Apologies for that. Something okay. really small. Okay. Yeah, local foco, the the movement of Paraguayan spices. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, loco foco, a tray, a crazy tribal dance performed in the West Indies. Loco, 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 loco foco, loco, foco. Oh, a crazy fox. Crazy oh, okay. crazy fox, okay. Loco foco, an Italian dish served for dinner on a train. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Roma Express. What would you like to have? Uh, loco foco, oh, por favor. How is the loco, loco foco? foco? <laughs> yes, it's a loco, it's a foco. Uh, her crazy focus on a camera. Oh, okay. Hey, so we got a double camera thing. Okay. So yeah, if we if we have like several of the same thing, we have to call wow. that one. Okay. All right. Caribbean Rococo art. Rococo, yeah. Rococo, Rococo. And you can see here that the thing here, a Rococo. He has a very excellent artwork here. Notice it across the nave and the transept of this uh, church that James Joyce mentioned. We, you know, because of the. Prefix loco, many of these use the word crazy. So, um, oh, crazy face. Loco foco. Crazy face. Boom, 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 boom. You got it. Okay. okay. Adjustment of camera that makes subject appear to be fat or thin. Loco ah. foco. <laughs> A condition of seeing everyone as crazy, as in 
She suffers from locofoco. She sees psychosis, psychosis everywhere. <laughs> I locofoco, you locofoco, we are locofoco. Okay, the Mile High Club only on a train. <laughs> well, that means you have to be taking the train that goes through Denver, Colorado. Okay. Uh, you have more? Yeah, I have, I have a few more. Yeah. I have one more. Okay. Um, a mildly insane telephone. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's just do one more. Yeah, there's so many. I actually many did there. not expect this big a crowd. I know, that's just fantastic. Like five right? We'll go through five super fast. Crazy local folks. Uh, means you're crazy. Uh, concentrating on the craziest person you know. Mm. Yes, yeah, there's, there's a lot of craziness to concentrate on a crazy person. Uh, crazy concentration. Uh huh. Focus out on land, oh, unreasonable focus on outlandish behavior. And loco foco. An insane photographer. <laughs> Dude, don't go over there. You're going to fall off the edge. No, this is great. This is perfect. You loco foco. Okay. Charles, I think <coughs> the answer I is. Confer for a minute. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, can I see the card? I'm, I'm, I'm going to. No, you're loco foco. Me. Ah, precious, my card. I'm going to pick, I'm gonna pick a handful, card. and we're going to take votes on the handful. Okay, one that got a big reaction, got a big reaction as we went along. Okay. Um, me for a minute. Yeah, right. No, I think, I think, you know, we let's for this particular game, let's modify it, and let's just tell everybody the answer for fun. Let's just do that right now. Uh, let's just tell everybody what the name, what the what the word local focal means without voting this time. The second one will vote because like people will know that they're being voted on. Oh, and stuff. No. <laughs> no. Don't be a local focal. Let us do this now. Ah, oh, you are so local. Focal. Um, hold on. Um, almost done. Almost done. <laughs> There's a difference between a novelist and an astrophysicist. You see. <laughs> He's like, hold on, hold on. I'm almost done. I'm like, okay. local focal. Let's just do it, man. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right, let me pick the three How favorites. Are we do this? Yes, M Mike has chosen his three favorites. Well, more than three, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, pick three. Pick three. Oh, three, three, man. three. We're going to vote on three. Okay. Three is the magic number. Yes. Okay, we'll each pick two. Two. Here. We're each going to pick two right. favorites from okay. here. Okay. Oh, I like the psychosis everywhere one. <laughs> and then the. Uh... Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do the. I'll do the. The uh, insane photographer one. That'll be my one choice, and then the other one will be. She suffers from loco foco. She sees psychosis everywhere. Those are my two choices. Okay. Okay. So, and mine are um, Caribbean rococo art and an Italian dish served yeah. for dinner on a train. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's do this. I, I will. I will do definition number one. Insane photographer. Okay. Question number two. Uh, okay. We'll write them all out so that we don't want to go in order. Um, <laughs> You guys all need to know what they are. It's just too small to see. I'm writing too small. Ah, you guys have to do loco foco to see my insane ah. photography. I mean, my, my writing. Okay, so psychosis everywhere. Now, I'm just going to abbreviate these. Uh, number three is, and you um, said, uh, train train Italian food. Okay, and number four? Caribbean rococo art. Caribbean art. Okay. So these are all... Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent choices. Okay, so, all right. Insane photographer, raise hand. Loco foco, meaning insane <laughs> photographer. Uh, oh, alas. You vote once. Vote once. Vote once. Oh, we vote. Yes, vote. <laughs> okay, number two, someone who sees psychosis everywhere. Ah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, nine. Number nine. Zero for insane photographer. I don't know why. I mean, the who wrote it. I don't know. We must have. We have. We have local focus here all the time. Okay. Italian, Italian food served on a train. Yeah. Oh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven, eight, know. nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That's right a lot. Twenty-one. Okay, and the last one. And Caribbean rococo art. One Caribbean okay. rococo right. art. Who is the author of the? Who is the author of? What? Emily Grant. <laughs> Emily Grant. Ah. Oh. We, we have a little something for you, Emily Grant. Ooh. A, a golden ticket. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay. But now I will. Uh, now I will tell you what the word actually means. Does anyone actually know the word? Does anyone know? No. 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 Okay. Um. But I'm, but I'm, what page is it on? It's on page fourteen. 
Loco Foco, a member of a radical faction in New York that opposed the more conservative mainstream Democratic Party starting in 1835. It comes up often, <laughs> more than you'd think. Um, but let we, me um, We are all loco foco. <laughs> the loco focos spoke up for social justice and opposed monopolies and banks. So they were pretty cool. Where does the name come from? From a type of match they used to light candles after Tammany Hall goons turned off the gas lights to disrupt their meeting. <laughs> So, the things you can learn. <laughs> okay, we have uh, another word for you now. Wait, wait, wait. But then that means like all the people who are trying to unionize Starbucks, they'd be like loco foco. <laughs> or loco moco. <laughs> loco cappuccino. Loco moco. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. That was great. Thank you, everybody. Okay, remember, we're going to use half cards now. So tear your cards in half for the question number two. All right, word number two. Word, next word. It's okay. We'll erase the first word later. The next word is rebarbative. 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 The word is rebarbative. <laughs> Is it edible? No, I'm sorry. That's, that's a joke from my college years. You don't want to hear the answer to that. Okay. All right. Rebarbative. We, we, shall, we shall find some sort of a, a musical interlude that uses the word rebarbative. You bet your rebarbative. I keep thinking of things that I would say if I were playing right now. <laughs> and, and I'll bet that some people are going to use exactly the things that I'm thinking of. <laughs> mm. Wow. What gets, to, what gets between me and my rebarbative? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling a little weird tonight. I could use some rebarbative. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let us collect our half index cards at this time. I will come this way. Uh, oh, no, they're writing still. I'll come this way. Yeah, you guys can pass it forward, kind of like in the olden days, you know, when you were in school and stuff. Please, feel free. Um, I, uh, any more? No? Pass it. You didn't pass notes in, in school? What? One of, one of my favorite activities, passing notes. And then my second favorite activity is passing something else. And then blaming somebody else for it. And then you'd go into the choruses, you smelt it, dealt it, and you'd be like, you denied it, supplied it, you know. Uh, the olden days. You guys still do that in school? No? Okay. You guys are way past that now, I bet. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, anybody else? Anybody else? No? Okay. All right. Last ones? Last call? Last call? Yes. Yes. No. Okay. Here. Yes. Thank you. Here's one. Ooh, excellent. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so you, you get Wait these. I get these. Oh, you need more. Here, take more. Okay. The next game. Let's play the few. Da, da, da. Okay, sorry. Rebarbative. A red veggie that causes gas. <laughs> I think What's for dinner, Mom? <laughs> Rebarbative. Oh, not again. <laughs> I had to open my window all last night. <laughs> this is going to be a theme. Tastes like rhubarb. Uh... Strawberry rebarbative pie, one of my favorite things. Oh, here we go. This is interesting. The tendency to redo construction work. Ah, ah yeah, yeah, yeah. See, oh, hold on. Uh, we're gonna have to rebarbitate this yeah. this whole building. You didn't put enough rebar in it in the first place. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. These are in, in, in tandem. A solution for a building with sagging floors oh. ne needs rebar reinforcement. Nice, mm -hmm. nice, nice, Very. nice. Okay. Again. Rebarbative, action of repeating what you say over and over. 
Rebarbative, action of repeating what you say over and over. <laughs> Rebarbative, action of... Oh. Rebarbative, being quick with fighting barbs about your relatives. <laughs> what if your relative's name is Barb? Barb. Barb. Okay. Barb's not that bad. Yeah. Oh, rebarbative. A reinforced bat cave. <laughs> Quickly, Robin, to the rebarbative. We haven't a moment to lose. <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> bat shit. Bat <laughs> <laughs> Holy rebarbative. Um, we have younger mice. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> rebarbative. Return to drug addiction. Oh. Rebarbative. Getting drowsy again. A caustic, a caustic treatment for dandruff. Wow, convincing. <laughs> Head and shoulders. It, it'll get barbed to everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Michael Jordan shampoo. Okay, rebarbative, steel reinforcing bar that takes no grief. Hey, don't you put me in that concrete pier. No, that's not happening. Get away. Rebarbative. <laughs> when you hate your haircut and need to get a second. One. <laughs> a second one. <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling with penmanship. I'm sorry. Oh, no, really? Okay, sorry. Well, that meant that, like, I needed a rebarbative after I cut off three years of pandemic hair, like, mm. in February. Mm. Did you? No. Did you need? I did not need one. Actually, my wife approved. <laughs> Super cuts. Best deal in town. <laughs> An adjective to describe alcoholic who keeps returning to a bar despite the judgmental bartender. <laughs> You're back again. Come on. Oh, come on, Joe. Just hold on. <laughs> hold on to that one. Uh, um, able to regrow hair quickly. The barbs are shooting out. Yes. After my rebarbative haircut, uh, my rebarbative powers were extreme. Notice how much hair is already back. Yeah. Rebarbative, a word to describe a person who is built like rebar. Barb. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Are they built like rebar or are they built like rebarb? That's like we can, you know. S strong in the spine. Yes. Need to visit beauty salon repeatedly. Oh. Rebarbative. Going to the same tavern every night. That's the same guy. The guy. Joe, give me that. Come on, man. Um. <laughs> Outdoor cooking on a grill made of glowing rebars. Ouch! I'm sure that would have a delicious concrete taste. Okay, rebarbative, repeat law quote. Repeat law quote. You mean like Felix Frankfurter, who had his lunch on the rebar? Bitte? Grilling? Rebarbative. Objection! Going, another one. Going Objection! Back, going back for a second haircut. Okay, okay, okay. Barber, rebarbative. That's a, that's what that's what's going on here. I didn't miss Rebar that. Rebarbarative. Rebarbarative. That's right. Rebarbarative. Uh, describing taking an insult and creating a response to an insult received. Oh. Okay. The sar the the sarcastic person gave a rebarbative reply to the rebarbative sarcastic reply. <laughs> This last one, you have a couple more. Uh, I got just a few more. Yeah, these um, are too good. I mean, we have to read them all. They're just so good. These are too much fun. Go ahead. I have <clears throat> an alternative to bellicocious strawberries. I don't know if bellicocious is a word. It's not in my book, but it's a good one. <laughs> I, I think bellicocious is a haplology. Because uh, bellicose is a word, but haplology is when you add a syllable to a word. Like, okay, yeah. Okay. So bellicosity, right, is okay. actually like a word. Bellicociousness is right? when you're bellicose but also precocious. Ah. <laughs> and then there's bellicociosity. <laughs> Bellicociousness, TT. Disestablishmentarianism. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. The art of throwing verbal zingers at cocktail parties. Oh, I love having John and uh, John in our happy hours because he's such a rebarbative individual. Makes everything laugh. I, I, I got. Oh, you, you have no more. You may. Oh, here, here. Take, oh, take oh, two. All right. I'll take. You read one. I'll read okay. one. You read one. No, this is. No, these are local focus. Local focus. <laughs> How did they get in here? <laughs> I thought we turned their gas lamps on. Crazy photographer. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay. So, so this one is last one? last one. Oh, a repeat of another one. Of or concerning rhubarb. 
This person even like like gave the conjugate parts in Latin of rebarbative. <laughs> rebarbative a um, you know. <laughs> also rhubarbative or rhubarbative, uh, yeah. Uh, of or concerning rhubarb, as in all of his best desserts are rhubarbative. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Okay. So, so what again, are we gonna choose? Okay. Let us um, pick again. Okay. Well, one has got to be rhubarb-like. Okay. okay. Something having to do with rhubarb. Well, was there one person's one particular? Oh man. Okay. Let's just use. To... Let's just use this one. Ha of or, I mean, this is this is like Latin conjugation. I think that okay. 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 Of or concerning rhubarb. Okay. Rhubarb-like. The other one. Um, I need. Give me a moment, okay? <laughs> the choices are too good. I know, you just have to take forever to figure them out. But I'm, I'm going to go with the, um, uh, I like the verbal zingers, because, you know, I'm a big fan of verbal zingers. Okay. Uh, although I'm not very good at them. Uh, just dad jokes. I'm pretty good at those. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I am good at those dad jokes. Verbal zinger thrower. Okay, what are your two choices? I'm struggling with. I'm struggling with three. I'm working hard. Oh, let's three, just give all three. Come on. Okay. Give me. Okay, give me. Give, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> See, this is an astronomer at work. Ah, throw another one in. <laughs> a lot of stars. For one more star. That's right. Alternative to bellicocious strawberries. Okay. I just like not the bellicocious word. Bellicocious. Bellic super califragilistic xp alpha bellicocious, cocious strawberries. Okay. Next. Being quick with biting barbs about your relatives. Ooh, biting barbs about relatives? Yes. Biting barbs about relatives. Okay. <laughs> Next. Able to regrow hair quickly. Ooh, regrow hair. -er. All right, good choices, everybody. All right, so the five choices again. Rhubarb-like, verbal zinger thrower, biting barbs about relatives, not bellicocious strawberries or regrow hair fast. All right, rhubarb-like. We got one rhubarb-like. Verbal zinger thrower. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I, eleven. <laughs> Anti bellicocious strawberries. Two. Biting barbs about relatives. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven? Okay. All right. Eleven. Also, we have a tie up here. This could be a precocious result. Oh, and the last one. See if you can break the tie, everyone. Being able to regrow hair rapidly. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Although I am rebarbative in that way. Maybe we just don't win this time. Okay. You guys remember Freaky Friday when my name's Boris and I'm here to bake you a meatloaf? Mm -hmm. Turns out his name was Morris and he was here to make you a meatloaf. Yeah. <laughs> but actually he was making beetloaf. His name was Morris and he was making a beetloaf. Very odd. Okay. So it looks like we have a tie here between verbal zinger thrower at cocktail parties and someone about biting barbs about relatives. Um, we have to break the tie, everybody. This no, is ranked I choice voting, everyone. I'm willing to have two no. winners in this round. Oh, are you? I have extra gold. What a generous choose. individual. <laughs> he must be so rebarbative. Okay. All right. Who are the people? One person who came up with the rebarbative or rhubarbative, rebarbative aum, uh, over concerning rhubarb. Who is this? Who is this? Yeah. Is that, is that yes. Person? Yes, it's rhubarb-like. Yeah. Oh, no. That was the only Sorry. one. Yes, oh. verbal zinger thrower. Oh, I'm sorry. There's verbal zinger throwers over there. Yay, verbal zinger thrower. Yay! And then the other one, biting barbs about relatives. Okay. And if your relative's name is Barb, then you have a really big problem. Okay. And the answer is. <clears throat> what does this word really mean? Let's find out. The relatives are thinking. Well, I know. But <laughs> okay. Rebarbative, extremely unattractive or repellent. And here is a quote. This is from a book by Iris Murdoch called The Bell. Still, everyone appeared to be extremely nice, except that that Dr. Greenfield man was a trifle rebarbative 
This was a word which Toby had recently learned at school and could not now conceive of doing without. <laughs> All right. Anyone remember from A Wrinkle in Time when uh, a character learned a word in the beginning and said, it's my new word for the day? You guys remember what that word was? Hmm? No? It, that's right. It was important. No, Charles Wallace did learn a word in school. He said, this is my new word of the day. And the mom said, prodigious. But what did he say? To get the answer, uh, A Wrinkle in Time is now available on that shelf for a very low, low price. Go find it sometime soon. Okay, Madeline the Engel. Huh? It, it, the book is right over there. <laughs> okay, moving on. Next question. We may need an eraser for this whiteboard. The answer is meaning uh, very unattractive, very unpleasant, extremely unattractive. Repellent. Repellent. Like, you know, I smeared Barbasol on myself, and now I'm rebarbative. Um, Margo or Catherine, do you have something I can wipe that board? Ooh, down? ooh, thank you. Perfect. Next word. Next word. Just, just give us the next word right away. Well, it's okay. The next oh, word is tabescent. Tabescent. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. We're gonna you, see. If we... You wipe all right. <laughs> wipe. No, I did. Uh oh no! I think one of these is not wiping cleanly. Oh no! Quick, quick! Give me more, more wet stuff. <laughs> okay. There, Mike. Oh. That was um, Meanwhile, or, yes, we can clean this up. We can clean this up while you write your definitions. Yes. Okay, am I ready? But, but, no, 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 no. We're going to show the word first. Tabescent. 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 Can you see? T a b e s c e n t. Don't forget. Tabescent. <laughs> Don't forget the C. One more time. T. Oh, you better read it because I don't mind Michael. T A B E S C E N T. Tabescent. 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 Good thing I didn't let microphone in. Who writes strange definitions on the board so they can have fun at a bookstore? <laughs> the best the author. author. It's a best the author. My classer. The author. Yes. I have a question. Yes. How do these words start off in somebody's mind and wind up a legitimate word? Right. How do words start up in someone's mind and wind up in a legitimate word? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also have a, someone that I know in this room who has studied linguistics in extensive detail who mm -hmm. might be able to answer that question later. But I'll bet you who, no, Mike has got the real answer. Who is your linguist friend? Oh, who, who here has studied linguistics at a, a, a university for like quite a bit of time and, and knows words like plosive? <laughs> oh, look, over there. Okay, yeah. Anyway, go ahead, Mike. It's all yours. Well, let's see. I know that, you know, if you look in the dictionary, you'll always, uh, the, a big dictionary that includes etymology, you'll see how it traces back through time from, you know, Latin roots or Old, or old English, Anglo-Saxon, Germanic roots. And, um, <laughs> but who knows, the first person to make up grunt or sound, you know, how that evolved into those other languages. I, I am not the person to explain this to you. I'm sorry. Anyway, anyway, language is a very uh, dynamic thing. This person to which I refer has informed me. Like, I have taken no formal linguistics education, but language is changing all the time, and the, the so-called Queen's English or whatever is, is now being thought about by linguists as, like, a way that societies have established norms uh, which may or may not be good, right? As, as, as actually some of my colleagues who are linguists also at, at the College of Staten Island talking about decolonizing or decolonializing language, right? You know how we have these men mental thought processes about, about um, if you use a certain dialect, if you speak with a southern accent, you're somehow less intelligent or somehow not perfect and to, in order to be truly successful uh, in media, you have to speak a Middle Atlantic accent, that kind of thing. So, very interesting thought processes. So, it's a great question. I don't know the answer, though. 
but it's a very long process. Okay, we got we got notes, passing notes. And anyone here have, know a relative or, or know somebody who was in passing notes mm -hmm. at, at Montclair High School? They were very yeah, they're very good. They're very good. Yeah, were well, you were in passing notes? No, no friend. Friend. friend of ours. Uh, da, 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 da. Ooh, huh, huh. We got more. We got, oh, thank you, thank you. Previous golden ticket holder. Anybody else? Okay. Tabescent. Oh, this is a Tabescent stack. All right. This is good. Okay. How are we doing on time, by the way? I don't want to go very long. Is it 7.30? Oh, no. Can you add a word? Which one was yours? Uh-oh. The top one? Oh, you want to look through all of them? No. No, I know mine. Oh, okay. So never mind. Never mind. Tell you what. Tell you what. If I read it, and then you go, well, wait, well, then you can. Uh, yeah, here, take take them all. Just just find yours quick. Go ahead. Start reading yours. Let's move fast. Yeah. Okay, we're I got it. Okay. Late. Oh, that was fast. Okay. Tabescent. This is too much fun. How are we, how are we moving so fast? Brightly moving. Brightly moving. Brightly moving. Okay. 747. Oh, my gosh. That was so tabescent. Tabescent. And especially okay. fizzy diet cola. Ah, okay, let's move really fast. Uh, oh, you read this one. Okay. Um, em <laughs> emerging sexually into columnar development. <laughs> Johnny grew tabescent as... <laughs> as... as the apple of Johnny's eye came by. Okay, never mind. But I think that's what you meant, <laughs> wasn't it? The best, describing the stripe pattern of tabby cats. Uh, oh, similarly, a cat that glows in the dark. Hey, oh, oh, the house cat. Mm. Oh, a psychic for cats. Tab, 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 we have tabby we have and cats. Okay, you got to hold on to the cats once. Okay. Oh, someone addicted to tab soda. Is that even salt anymore? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Cat smell. Tabescent. Cat is getting very, very tabescent yeah. stuff. Smelling like a cat's litter box. Whoa. Having multicolor fur. Ah, emitting a cat like odor. Whoa. <laughs> tabescent. Having just one calorie. <laughs> <laughs> Having the quality of bubble from diet soda. <laughs> okay. The. <laughs> The effect a sickly of a sickly glow after ingesting a tapeworm. Mm. Ugh. Mm. Ugh. Tab. Mm. 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 Referring to cats that glow in the dark. Again. Especially tabbies. A tabescent. A cat climbing upwards. Resembling a tabby cat in looks and smell. Um, of or relating to the scent of a soda can. <laughs> Smelled like Tab, the diet soft drink from the 80s. Oh, like we needed to know that Tab was the soda <laughs> drink from the 80s. But thank there you for letting us here. know just in case we there did not know what that was. There are people here who might not have been No, no, no. I, I, wish, I wish I did not know what Tab was. But... Smelling like a cat. Okay, Boomer. Keep... <laughs> Keeping tabs of smells you encounter. Ah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, a that, cat growing sexually columnar. No, sorry, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. A small copper pipe behind the bar. That's totally different. I like this one. Okay, that glow you experience when someone else picks up the tab at dinner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we gotta have that one. That's, that's awesome. Well done. Okay, okay smelling like a cat. Oh, like anyone cat. know the song Smelly Cat? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, see. That's the boomer that are talking right there. <laughs> Smelly cat. Okay. Uh, okay, I think I'm it. I'm, I'm done. I got it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That was a rebarbative word. Got to tell you. Okay, any more? Uh, but, but, um, no, yep. let me just okay. Keeping tabs all right. On. Let, we're keeping tabs on all this, yeah. right? Yeah. So, okay. Uh, oh, anyone know anybody named Tabitha? Yes? Anything? How about how about from from the television and the movies? Elizabeth Montgomery and who was the husband? Darren. Darren was the actor, but there were two people. Dick York. Dick York, and then Dick Sergeant. Yeah, Dick Sergeant. 
Right. Yeah. Right. Which one was it that had to stop because he was too injured? York. York. Dick York was in there at first, right? And then yeah. it happened. Yeah, it was quite sad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a back issue, yeah. Mm -hmm. it was back. Aaron something? Okay, so we're going to write down tabescent. My, my vote number one has got to be the one that has to do with the uh, copper pipe. The small copper pipe behind the bar, okay? Because that is so different from everybody else's, it seems most likely to be actually correct. Okay. <laughs> and then we have, uh, that they sit behind the bar and put copper pipe in my jar and say, man, what are you doing here drinking tab? <laughs> having just one calorie. Okay, that's the second one. That's, the, that's the having just, the that's right, yeah. just one calorie. Okay, and the other one? That glow, okay. Yeah, but someone else picks up the test. glow of free lunch. Why don't we, we have to limit it to these? Three. These three, okay. The globe of free lunch. Yeah. So we only have time to do one more game. This is too much fun. You guys are awesome. The book has like ten thousand zillion words like this. I mean, they're just great. <laughs> Two thousand words. <laughs> yeah. What's a factor of five amongst astrophysicists, friends? Right. That's right. Okay. All right. Let's get the vote going. Number one. Copper pipe behind the bar. Oh, come on. This is obviously the correct one. One vote, me. Okay, ah. fine. <laughs> okay, having just one calorie. I like that one. Just one calorie. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Number six. You are number six. What is the correct response to that line? I'm a, not a number, I'm a free man! <laughs> to which afterwards? Laughter. Laughter. <laughs> Sorry. That's just... Did you know that Iron Maiden, the heavy metal band from the UK, actually has a song called The Prisoner? It was on their album Number of the Beast. And, and the Number of the Beast started with a line from Revelation. Woe to you of earth and sea, for the devil sends the beast with wrath. The number three. <laughs> the glow. glow of free lunch. Oh, okay, obviously the winner. Who is the Okay, who is the glow of the free lunch winner? The oh, winner! Whoa. Is this your second golden ticket? Yeah. Oh, whoa, well, yeah. two golden tickets. A wow. golden ticket. Double try. Okay, big applause for everybody. Good, good, good choice, good choice. Okay. okay. I, I will now read you the correct... Um, Actual definition Must of you? <laughs> I, I actually it's do too much fun. That's right. Um, <laughs> I want to use tabescent incorrectly at some point. Having lunch. Tabescent. Yes. Is, is, Joe, let me let me pick up the tab. Oh, I feel so tabescent. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> the word is rare, and it means wasting away. Again in Margaritaville. Yeah. The word. <laughs> wait, yes. Tabescent in Margaritaville. You're probably the, drinking tab in Margaritaville. The word derives from. I'm not sure how to pronounce this, tabies, tabies, um, a medical term for the emaciation that accompanies a disease. I wonder if the person who named Tab the Diet Cola was really a subversive <laughs> prankster. <laughs> <laughs> Wasting away. Um, you know what? This is, this is like, I, I went hunting just now and found no evidence to support my theory. I did, however, learn that some people think the name TAB is an acronym for Totally Artificial Beverage. <laughs> <laughs> According to Snopes.com, that rumor is false. <laughs> okay. One Tabescent again in Margaritaville. One more word. Searching for my rebarbative. Some people claim there's loco foco, but I know. Dun, 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 dun. The fourth word is... Dowser. Dowser. This is the fourth and final word, because it's almost 8 o'clock, I'm really sorry. But we're ending Dowser. with a good one. Dowser. 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 Yeah. Dowser. E o w. In the famous e uh, duop group, Da Na Na. Yeah. Da -na -na. Sha? Sha Na Na. Sha. Sha. I am the Sha Na Na. <laughs> yeah, but that was Bowser and Sha Na This is Dowser, so it must be Da Na. Da -na -na -na. Can everybody see it who needs to see it? D O W S E R. Ready? <laughs> mm. Give everyone else a chance to catch up. Dowser.
Edward sucks. He can't come up with it. <laughs> Dowser. <laughs> the problem is it's too short, right? Yeah, because it's only two syllables and six letters. And now you just don't have enough. Like rebarbative, you can work with all kinds of stuff. The re, the rebar, the rebar. Still think of things with that star. Oh, this is a tough one. It's, good. it's a good one to end on. It's a good one to end on. The challenge. Yes. Re. Who has Dowser? Okay, right let's do this because we want to finish by eight o'clock and give you a chance to Thank find you. more books. Thank you. Buy books, right? We want to buy books, including Thank A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle. You know, there's a famous story how Madeline Langle like tried to sell this book to dozens of publishers and it was not accepted, and then finally a publisher accepted it, like took a chance on it, became the best-selling young adult book of all time. So, all y'all publishers, you know. Take a chance, 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 chance on the buy a chance, take a chance, take a chance. No? No chance? All right. Okay. Okay, let's do this. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm using my chair as a, as a staging ground as opposed to an actual seating place. That's just who I am. That's what I do. Ooh. The impact of Mario's nemesis on the stock market. <laughs> that was it. Of course, most of us who recognize Tab don't know that Bowser is one of Mario's great enemies in Donkey Kong. Ah, right. That was a rebarbative comment. Okay, my part. Okay, how Tabescent was that? Go on. Dowser, a consultant to families trying to set a dowry for their least attractive daughter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A sleepy dog. A sleepy dog. A miniature dachshund. Person who sprays a garden hose. <laughs> dowser. Oh, a dowser. Oh, a dowser. oh, okay. A dowser. Oh, okay, right. that's good. That's good. I like that. Um, a device for. <laughs> Somebody wrote the actual definition, which I'm not going to read. Ooh, <laughs> you I, should have shown up in the audience. <laughs> but see, if you, if you read it, then it was in there and it wasn't voted, then it would have been an awesome result. Uh, I, no. Think about that. That, that would have been cool. That's cheating. No, that would be awesome. Okay, Dowser. Dookie Hauser's nickname. <laughs> um, Dowser. Tony Dow, knighted Dow, sir. Uh, <laughs> who's Tony Dow? Uh, uh, Wally on Leave it to Beaver. Oh. Beef, when are you going to grow up? <laughs> Someone proficient at playing the stock market. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is cool. This person wrote at, at. You know the thing where you're like Paris in, in the spring? Someone proficient at, at playing the stock market. They put at on the end of the one line and then in the beginning of the next line. Okay. At, at. Yeah. Got to read that. Good job, guys. Right. Yeah. Um, that was our one subscribing to the teachings of Dow. Uh -huh. uh. Oh, here's another Mario Brothers one. The dad of Bowser from Mario Brothers. Yeah? Dowser. And so Dowser, so, so that means Bowser's grandfather's name is Gowser. Right? And then the great grandfather's G -G Gowser. G -G -G Gowser. One Gowser. A Dowser. One who puts out candles. A Gowser. Ooh. With a garden hose? Uh. <laughs> okay, two more. I have two more. Ooh, person who prognosticates stock prices. Mm -hmm. um, the stock index that says, sir, as it takes your cash. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, a dog who searches for metal on a beach. Oh. Go ahead. Pick, pick some more. Okay. 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 Meanwhile, um, a person with a one-track mind, a dowser. <laughs> huh. I douse, that's a problem. Okay, someone who follows the stock market very carefully. The day the Dow Jones Industrial Average drops significantly, or a day, a day when Dowser. The day the Dowser. And they were saying someone who can stop, can't stop thinking about the stock market. Someone who puts out fires. Hmm. A theme. Okay, looking for water. Okay. The nickname of Doogie Hauser, Dowser. Another sure. word. Someone already said that. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Those two people think oh, that must be the real answer. An employee of the Dow Chemical Company. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. We have to all right. Choose. So we have to choose. Choose three. Do you have some over there that you? In your hand? Uh, no, I'm all done. I mean, in your pile. Oh you well, I, I really like the one with the garden hose. Okay. Super. Yeah. Yeah. Garden hose guy. Garden hose guy. 
do do, and then we have to do one that has to do with the Mario Brothers game because that's obviously important. Okay, so Bowser's dad. All right, what do you have? Um, I have these three. Okay, three. We're gonna I, go. Do you think that is appropriate? Tony Down Knight. No. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <or> no. no. <laughs> yes or no? Maybe. I don't know. I I doubt it. Tony Dow. Just write Tony Dow. Tony Dow. Yeah. Tony Dow's knighthood. Okay. And then the stock index that says sir. Okay, as it takes your cash. Stock index, sir. And the last one? A consultant to dowers trying to set a dowry for their least attractive daughter. <laughs> very good, very good. A dowry uh, setter. That's along with like Irish setters and, and um, pointer setters. Right? Yeah. Dowry setters. Okay. Final round. Time for voting. Um, okay. Garden. Guy who sprays a garden hose. One, two, three. All right. Three garden hose guys. The dad of Bowser from Mario Brothers. One. I would vote for it if I were loud, but I'm not. I can vote? Yeah. Two. <laughs> yes. Voted in the last one. That's true. But, but that, that, that was wow. You thought we didn't see that. <laughs> that was very rebarbative of you to remember. I was hoping that you'd be tabescent and not notice. Okay. Tony Dow's knighthood. Tony One, Dow when he's knighted. Two. Tony Dow when he's Dow, knighted. Sir. Okay. Two. Okay. The stock index who calls you sir as it takes away your money. One, two, three. 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 It's a magic number. And last, a consultant to families trying to set a dowry for their least attractive daughter. Yeah. The winner. <laughs> Who is the author of that one? There you go. Yay, golden ticket. Yay! Now, everyone who has a golden ticket, hold it up, please. And here we have someone who has two. And I have something for you. An everlasting gobstopper. A great glass elevator. Oh, a crown that says, I won Twisted Dictionary at Watch on Booksellers. Yay! <laughs> Wear it with pride. Hold on. Put, put it on so that we can all take pictures of you. I also have for you oh, a copy of the book. Yay! <laughs> How effervescent. So, um, that is everything. I hope that you enjoyed it. <laughs> I hope you guys had fun. It was, it was a gamble. Really good. <laughs> no, we really appreciate your good time. But um, if, if I may, if I may, Mike, can I just ask you... Oh, I forgot. What is the answer? <laughs> okay, let me okay, yeah. grab that for you. Sorry. <laughs> Dowser, page 49. Oh, by the way, a few handful of people. A handful of people knew what a Dowser was and wrote more or less the correct definition. A person who uses a divining rod, uh, a forked rod, also known as a Dowser, to find underwater, underground water or minerals. Here's a quote. This comes from a book review in the New York Times, 2017. It's a, a few lines, so be patient. An old man arrived blindfolded with a forked tree branch in hand. He was a dowser, and the branch was his divining rod. It quickly led him to a source of water. The divining rod pulled the dowser up the driveway, past the cabin, over the full length of our dock to its end, where he sploosh fell into four feet of lake water. <laughs> It worked. <laughs> wow. People have no faith in these things. But <laughs> well, um, do you feel like, uh, Mike, just one thing, one favor for us all. If there were three words you would use right now, <laughs> doesn't have to be from the book, just three words that describe how putting this book together for 45 years made you feel when you saw it in your hot little hands, what are those three words? Oh, oh, you mean yes. the moment of actually seeing? Yes. yes. This, this is the copy that arrived, the galley, before I actually saw it, and it has little 
band across it, which covers up the funny caption of the cartoon. And I was nervous. I'm not going to give you three vocabulary <laughs> words, but I'll tell you the story. I was very nervous because uh, you know you want it to look good, and you don't know what it's going to look like inside. But it actually, I was really pleased, especially with the way that the pictures came out. They're, a little, they're old, they're vintage engravings, mostly from the 19th century, and they, they just came out well. I was afraid they'd be muddy or you couldn't see them. And um, <laughs> I, um, I had my own captions to those pictures. So anyway, I hope that you will take a look at those. I, I was really excited, really happy when I thought that. Really? Yes. There must be a word that means really happy, but I can't think of it right this second. Overjoyed? Um, <laughs> ecstatic? <laughs> well. Effervescent. Effervescent. I could. Yes. I'm looking, I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> My glasser, everybody. Big hand. Yeah. Woo!